Governor, you have a fascinating op-ed out in the New York Times today. And I'd like to start more generally. You have three groups that you really identify with respect to undocumented immigrants. Uh, you've got the dreamers that a lot of talk about, about 800,000. You've got 10 to 15 million people overall undocumented. And then you've got the Salvadoran group of 200,000 more or less. Take me through those three groups in this sense. Which are the most urgent for the country to deal with? Well, DACA right now, because these young people are right on the razor's edge and they're, they're freaking out about whether they're going to be divided. I mean, just, just think for, about this for a second. I was telling a friend of mine, I said, just imagine that your son uh, marries a dreamer. They have a six-year-old son and then the dreamer, his wife, gets told that she has to leave the country. And the son calls you up and says, what do we do? Where should our son go? Should I leave the country? I mean, we don't need to be doing that. These are people who are contributing to our country. They're working very hard here. I mean, if they break the law, that's one thing. But if they're law abiding and fully integrated, no reason to, uh, to ship them out. Secondly, on the, uh, this business of the Salvadorians, I mean, you had George W. Bush that gave them, let them in here, or let, gave them a waiver. The same thing with Barack Obama. And here's a case again, where there isn't any reason to start yanking these people out of our country to ship them back. Now, do we need changes in immigration? Do we need border protection? Of course we do. I voted with Ronald Ra for Ronald Reagan's plan in 1986. We didn't see the kind of border security that we all wanted to have. I think that's important. But let's not look in the rearview mirror to try to make up things that were mistakes were made before. Let's look through the, through the windshield. And I think in this case, ripping families apart and, tr and going out there to deport people doesn't make much sense to me. In terms of the 10 million, 11 million, I was on the stage, I think I was the only one that said they should not have a path to citizenship, but they should be legalized and they ought to pay some back taxes and things like that. That is, there's not a, a practical way, nor is it right, to start mm. driving around with school buses, loading them up and driving them to the border. It's, it's, it's absurd. So they gotta forget the politics Make the changes that need to be made, but give people relief today who are, who really are so fearful of their families. But you've said it, Governor, this seems to be <coughs> politics. Is it just the president right now taking a hardline stance in order to gain some bargaining power? I have no clue. I mean, one, one minute they're saying, well, we can get a deal, and the next minute they're saying no deal. And you had, you had a bipartisan group from the Senate show up yesterday, and and they got shot down. I, I think I don't, I don't have all the knowledge of their plan, but it was basically things that both sides gave a little bit. But what I don't like, and I, I hope that our viewers don't like, is using dreamers, kids that were brought here by their parents years ago, who are sort of a pawn in all these negotiations. These are people we're talking about. And, you know, we, we have a, a Republican Party that's always been pro-family. Okay, well, keep that in mind. The other thing I think that's important is, you know, I was talking to a senator the other day and I was saying, uh, tell me about the faith-oriented people that we have in, oh yeah, we have a lot of them. I said, okay, well, faith requires action. We gotta remember that you don't wanna disrupt these families and scare these kids. That's not what we learn from our faith. Uh, so, you know, I just, I'm like, let's just get something done here and we can deal with the more complicated issues right around the corner and the Democrats ought to say, we'll do it. But there's nothing getting done. So Governor, Maybe it will, I don't know. Who know? You try to tell me what's gonna happen tomorrow. <laughs> this is like a reality. This, is, this could never make it on television because this is a reality show that no one could have ever imagined. But, but, but in the end, to get things done, it's the art of the possible. And as a practical matter, there are politicians, starting with the president and a number of your fellow Republicans, who clearly think it's in their political interest to take a hard position on this. What could you do to reassure or them? Maybe Say, they Let's let or the maybe they believe. Or yeah, maybe they. maybe they believe in it. I don't know. What do I think? I think they ought to just pass a bill in five minutes. I've been saying this for months, that says that the dreamers can stay here. Period. End of story. That's what I think they should do. But you'd be in favor of some sort of uh, border protection in order to, as part of that yeah, deal. Yeah, I mean, if they wanted to put that in there, that's fine. But th to me, take care of the dreamers, and then you can do the more comprehensive reform. We need comprehensive immigration reform. We have to make sure that we know who's coming in. We have to make sure we protect our borders. 
But why are we using the dreamers as a pawn in these negotiations? These are people. This is not like a, a statistic or a number. These are real people. Do you need to protect the dreamers <laughs> before government funding runs out on January 19th, which is what the Democrats I, I are mean, trying I to do? Or do you need I to untangle they, the think, issue? Look, I think they should have done this months ago, okay? I don't know what they're going to do. I just hope these folks get protected and they can get this thing done. Uh, you know, when I served in the Congress, I was the chairman of the Budget Committee. We balanced the federal budget. We did it with Dem Bill Clinton was the president. What was the result? We paid down the largest amount of the publicly held debt in modern history. We had balanced budgets. We worked together. Same thing was true on welfare reform. I, I, I just, it's just a place that has become dysfunctional. If you were back in Congress <clears throat> today, sir, would you be willing to shut down the government oh, please, in, order, no. in order to take care of the dreamers? No, I think, I mean, the answer is go to work and get this fixed. And I think there's an inclination on both sides to avoid a shutdown. You, nobody wants to do, nobody wants to do a shutdown. But I will also tell you there are times when you just say, I'm not going along. So you see how it goes.